Hey guys, welcome back. Again, my name is Laura Steinbach, and in this particular section, I'm going to be discussing how to make a new document workflow. Now, generally, the way I like to build out my workflows is by having the document right next to me. This lets me know what to name the interview and um, what variables or questions I'll need in this interview. So um, let's see here. The name of this form is JDF 577 Extreme Risk Protection Order Information Sheet. And you can also follow along with this um, and automate this document as well. Um, so generally, I usually name it the name of the form, as I mentioned earlier. Um, since I am working with, uh, with just one form for this example, um, sometimes these workflows are named like client intake or uh, petition for divorce, and it includes more than just the petition, more, gen, more than just the intake form, for instance. Usually it has a bunch of forms attached with it um, pre-filled um, so that the attorney or the attorney will just need to review it and make any updates as needed when it's sent over. So um, additionally, um, I'm skipping the step of me actually making or diagramming the workflow and how the forms will be outputted. I usually use Lucidchart for that so I can diagram it out before I actually automate anything or create any interviews. Um, and that's just so we know which forms go where in what interview and uh, um, what information is to be gathered. So, so now, as you can see, I made this new workflow and I also, I apologize for interchanging interview and workflow, but they mean the same thing. So generally, um, I dive head first into this, especially if it's a very simple form. And this is so I can provide the client with a prototype, um, during the, a preliminary interview we have with clients, um, I'll generally ask them if they want to, this to be used internally or um, want it to be client facing. And this determines how I phrase the section titles and the page names, um, and also how the questions are phrased, obviously. Um, but generally, um, the clients that I get, uh, they're rather inexperienced and um, they know of document automation, but not are not like entirely sure how it's supposed to look, especially with document, for instance. And they have some idea of what it should look like, because uh, some of them know of TurboTax doesn't mean they use it, but they know of it. So providing them with a prototype is very helpful just to give them an idea or a starting point on how the interview is or how this questionnaire, how this workflow is being presented. Um, so they'll be able to either change the question or how the questions are phrased, how the pages are named, how the sections are named, and obviously what items are being gathered per question. Um, so this is why I generally like to dive into automation first after I make that workflow. Um, I just haven't had a client where they um, came in knowing how to ask the questions, what pages to title it, what sections to title it. Um, that's very rare to have a client like that. So if you're in a particular position where you feel like you're unexperienced and you want a prototype, I highly encourage you to give your documenter free range on that too. Um, just because it, it just makes it easier when you're trying to review something or you're trying to envision something you don't really understand, for instance. So highly encourage you to try that route if you're struggling. So let's see here. Um, now actually diving into the questionnaire creation, interview creation, workflow creation. Um, 
I'm going to start off with naming the page. Um, if this is going to be uh, client facing, which means the, the client's client will see the information, I will typically name it information about you. And in particular, when we want to ask for that client's full name, I notice you have to present questions um, like your first or your your le your full legal name. Like you need to present it that way, just so you don't get nicknames, so you don't get. Um, just the first name, for instance. I'm um, just, that's just what I noticed um, with client facing interviews. A lot of clients won't <laughs> read the questions um, or they won't read it fully. So if you, uh, if you do your best to be as detailed with your questions as possible, you'll get the results you want. But if you're vague and just ask for a full name, um, sometimes you'll get a nickname in there. Sometimes, unfortunately, unfortunately, you'll get like their full name or sorry, their first name, like Beyonce or something like that, you know. So let's just so trying to say full legal name helps a lot with that. Let's see. Um, oh, I skipped this conditional question. So. Let me give an example of this conditional question. So when you have questions where it can be unchecked or checked or where you want certain um, clauses to show up, for instance, it's really helpful to use either a yes, no question, a single select, a combo box, multi select or drop down. These allow you to pick uh, options or they allow you to pick scenarios where you want certain things to show up. And the best way to explain this is a, with a yes, no question, just because this is how the form is presented. It's a rather simple, uh, rather simple um, scenario here. If it's yes, then this is checked. If it's no, then this is unchecked. So the question is asking if the client wants their address to be omitted want your address to be omitted because you fear that including your address will risk harm to you and your family or any member of your family household. Or harm to you, was harm to you or any member of your family or household. Another cool thing about documents, you can drag and drop um, questions like this. And you can also, using the feature on the left-hand side here, you can also move pages and move questions to, to other pages. So just in case um, you needed that tip. But yeah, um, so now I have this question ready. So when I actually automate it, so if the client wants that address to be omitted, this will hit check. And if they don't want it omitted, this will stay blank. So now I'm just gonna do a time skip up to a completed questionnaire. All right, hey guys, welcome back. So now you'll see here, I have a completed interview with all the information about the client being gathered. Again, this is client facing. Um, if it was internal facing to be used at a firm, everything would be reworded to be the client's information, um, client's full legal name, et cetera, et cetera. But for the purposes of this video, since it's client facing, um, these are how the questions are gonna be presented. So we're collecting information about the client here in this first page. 
The next page, we're gathering the alternate address. Um, as you can see here, if they want that, uh, if they want their address to be omitted, we have to collect an alternate address, and that's what this page is gathering. And it will only show up if um, we want to omit that address. Next page is we're gathering information about the person about the person who you are seeking protection against, which is the respondent. Um, in this section header, I have respondent information. Usually, if it's client facing, clients won't know what a respondent is. So I try to use this header area to explain what a respondent is, or ideally, if the, if the client has an idea of how they want that uh, reworded, we'll use that. Uh, but generally, I try to use this section to explain what the respondent is. Um, I'm gathering all their information here. And you might notice that I have uh, up to 15 questions on this page. Um, that's going to depend on how much information is getting gathered and to how much information or how many questions you want presented per page. So that's something to keep into account. I have some clients that want three questions per page and other clients don't really, um, aren't really concerned about that. So just keep that in mind because some clients, some interviews that are client facing can be really fatiguing, especially if it's part of the divorce process or estate planning process, just because there are so many questions involved. So trying to section it out um, will help prevent that fatigue. Um, let's see. And then this is the last page information about the person who you are seeking protection against. Make sure these are the same. Cool. So this is just a continuation of that. Of Since that was hitting 15 questions, I was like, okay, I need to make a new page. So that's what I did here, gathering more information here. All right, so now let me move this form out the way. I'm going to give an example of uh, the interview. So as you can see here, the header is your information. And since uh, the section header is the exact same thing, it's going to show up there as well. So we're just going to put in some dummy data and we're going to say yes to omitting address so we can see this alternate address page. Fill that out. And as you can see here, um, this is the explanation of what a respondent is. It just provides, in my opinion, it provides more context, even though it's long, um, the client will know what information we're gathering on this page. And this is gathering aliases. So if there are no aliases, we won't see the next questions, but we're just, for the purposes of this, we're just gonna gather it. Additionally, another thing to point out is uh, we have clients that are uh, more progressive and want to incorporate um, more gender options, for instance, on forms. As you can see here on this particular form, we're limited to male or female. Um, but if you're one of the clients that want to include non-binary, I highly encourage you to um, say that to your documenter. Uh, just because we can include more options, um, but your documenter might uh, just follow what's on the form. Um, that's generally what I like to do, just because I don't want to impact how the courts view the forms that are being outputted, just so we don't risk them being tossed out. Be just, just pro tip, um, if you know your courts will accept non-binary or something like that as an option, um, tell your documenter that. Um, it just helps. Uh, it just helps a lot um, with uh, the interview creation process. Um, but if you notice it when you see a prototype, that's still great too to want to incorporate that. Um, just because we've had issues, or I've had issues with that in Texas, where uh, where we had to make 
um, court forms for homosexual couples with children to get divorced because the courts there do not have that form available. So we had to make it. So just a heads up, um, depending on your client, they might want that. Um, depending who are you are as a client, you might want that. So that's definitely doable. So let me just hit that. And this is the review screen that people will see. Um, you can edit any information through this page. Just pre-fill that out again. You'll see the name changes. And since we don't have an output document, uh, you won't see anything outputted here. But that's generally how an interview is created. In the next video, I'm going to show you how to automate the document with the Document Tagger Word plugin. See you there.